Hello, and welcome back to the Hills to Hawkesbury News Roundup. I'm Josh, and I'll be taking you through some of the most important news from the last week. So without further ado, let's get started. The Lower Portland Ferry will be continuing operation under its current contract until September 2024, despite community concerns that it would cease last Saturday. The contract for the ferry, which is co-funded by both the Hills Shire and Hawkesbury City Councils, was initially due to expire on the 5th of August, but Hawkesbury City Council agreed to extend the contract with the private operator for at least another year. Mayors Sarah McMahon and Peter Ganjemi both stressed the importance of Riverside communities to their respective councils in a joint statement, reiterating their commitment to the locals living in areas where the Lower Portland Ferry is a necessity. The ferry is expected to be temporarily unavailable for routine maintenance, and there is also a current tender on the market for a complete overhaul of the service. More news will be available about both of these points in the coming months. The Waves Fitness and Aquatic Centre in Borkham Hills recently won the UDIA New South Wales Excellence in Social and Community Infrastructure Award, where it was recognised for its innovation, accessibility and inclusion of a range of new health and leisure opportunities. The centre was recognised on the 4th of August at UDIA New South Wales's Gala Dinner, where Mayor Peter Ganjemi and Council's General Manager Michael Edgar received the award. Built by ADCO Constructions, it's been a year since works were completed on Waves and has serviced the community well since then. Earlier this year, it took the number one spot in the Cohesive Communities category at the National Awards for Local Government in June. The award solidifies Waves as one of our area's foremost aquatic and fitness centres. It's located at 44 Milam Road in Borkham Hills, next to the Roxborough Park Rose Garden. New South Wales Health Minister Ryan Park has rejected rumours that the plans for the Rouse Hill Hospital had been axed in a statement made to Hills to Hawkesbury Community News. He stated that Labor made the election commitment for the hospital and fully plans to deliver on it. Mr Park said there would be more to say about the hospital plans soon, while a spokesperson from Health Infrastructure confirmed the project's budget as $700 million. The hospital is expected to have 300 beds and provide a wide number of health services to this rapidly growing corner of northwest Sydney. The expected completion date for the hospital is either late 2027 or 2028. The cover story for our print edition this week is about the Wildcat Conservation Centre, a sanctuary and research centre for wildcats found across the world located right in the Hawkesbury. Founded by Ben Britton in 2016, the centre protects endangered species of wild felines. These include lesser known species like fishing cats, clouded leopards, servals and caracals, as well as the iconic cheetah. They currently have 17 different cats on site, keeping them in captivity as insurance for these endangered species. If you'd like to learn more about protecting wild cats, you can book a tour at the Conservation Centre, and all costs will directly go to helping the centre keep up their great work. Read the full story about them in our print edition, and head to the Wildcat Conservation Centre's website for more info. Russell Town Centre's Market Square was a sea of green and gold, as hundreds gathered on Monday to see the Matildas beat Denmark 2-0 as part of the Hillshire Council's pop-up for the FIFA Women's World Cup series. Despite the late 8.30pm kickoff, the crowd enthusiastically shouted in support of the Matildas the whole night. This was the crowd's reaction when the Matildas got their first goal of the night. Try to spot yourself if you were there. It was really great to be there on the night to experience the enthusiasm of that crowd. Thankfully, if you missed out, the Matildas are playing again this Saturday. This time, they're up against France in a quarter-final that's sure to be a great game of football. Kickoff starts at 5pm. Don't miss a night of supporting Australia's sporting superstars and, once again, hopefully another win for the Matildas. Earlier this year, Louis the Platypus made our front page after being tagged and released by the Cat Eye Hills Environment Network, thanks to Dr Michelle Ryan and Catherine Warwick. Now, a local platypus population has been discovered by the CHEN all the way from Castle Hill to Cadai. The platypuses have all been extremely healthy and more research is being conducted to understand more about them and ensure that they remain happy and healthy. To celebrate the remarkable discovery, Hillshire Council is conducting a number of workshops this month all about platypuses. On Thursday the 17th, children can enjoy an educational talk and activities about the creatures at Castle Hill Library from 4 till 5 p.m. A bush care event on Sunday the 20th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Connolly Way in Kellyville will see volunteers help to remove invasive weeds to make habitats more platypus friendly. And on Saturday the 26th from 12 to 2 p.m., the CHEN is hosting a storytelling session about the discovery at Addengrove Community Environment Centre. 
For more info, head to the Hillshire Council's events webpage. Now, here's a highlight of some of the upcoming events happening in the Hills and the Hawkesbury. Powerhouse Castle Hill is hosting a free family day tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. filled with loads of activities and demonstrations. You can see their Mars rover in action, get creative with technological activities, or catch a talk from one of the museum's experts. The new Australian musical from Jai Bryant, Captain Moonlight, is now in season at Richmond School of Arts. If you're interested in learning a bit of musical history about one of Australia's earliest folk heroes, look for either the 2pm or 7.30pm sessions on the 12th, 19th or 26th of August. Dural Village Markets are on Sunday the 13th, taking place on the grounds of the Dural Country Club. Show up on the day for an unbelievably wide range of stalls and activities. And local history buffs should consider booking a day with Tim Soden, a local historian who runs walking tours of the little-known Thornley Zigzag Railway that was primarily used in the 19th century. Tim, who's written a book about the history of the railway, leads regular free tours where he retraces the path of the railway through modern Thornley. You can register for a walking tour by visiting the link on screen. And that does it for this week's edition of the News Roundup. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. This is Josh, signing off.